Here comes the finger of high adventure. What's going on YouTube fam? Mikey here shooting another high adventure video. Glorious day out here on Lake Murray here in South Carolina. A little breezy this morning, a little breezy, but according to the weatherman, uh, it's supposed to calm down, hopefully, as the day goes on. I don't know about that though. I trust the weatherman about as much as I trust a politician. So actually, no, that's probably a disservice to weathermen. I apologize to any weather people out there. We are out finally today going to target some gar. I want to do a gar catch and cook and try for myself and see if the, we can make these fish taste good. A lot of people um, don't like to eat them. In fact, they're considered a trash fish here in the South. But there are some people that uh, enjoy them. A lot of people bow hunt them here, uh, kind of like carp. Uh, but there are some people that do enjoy them. So we'll see if we can hook into some and get after it and uh, throw down a little catch and cook today. I have a lot of people always asking me about my kayak. This is the Hobie Mirage Outback, the 2020. We've got uh, all kinds of compartments, kind of like, well, I just store a bunch of stuff in there today. I also will put like bait in there sometimes. I've got the Helix 5 Hummingbird ready to rock and roll. The battery sits up front in the hole up there. And uh, yeah, obviously a ton of cargo space. And uh, yeah, I love this thing. If you're a serious fisherman and uh, you do a lot of fishing, uh, I always tell people like, if, if you're looking for a kayak to fish out of, like save up your money. These aren't very cheap, but they're not that bad either. If you really want to get like a serious fishing kayak, the Hobies, man, these are just the way to go. I would 100% I would recommend them. I was out here the other day and there were like two and three foot swells out here. And I was never once worried in the Hobie. Uh, it's just a fantastic kayak. You can stand up and fish in it. The pedal drive is phenomenal. So 100% recommend these. Get yourself one if you're interested in, the, uh, in a kayak for fishing out of, for sure. This is nice. I love the seat too in this thing, like being able to sit up a little bit off of the water. Drop our kickboard there. Turn on the old hummingbird. Got full battery. Man, what a day. Let's have a day. Let us just have a day out here. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Let's do this. Just saw a gar hit the surface right over here. So guys, what I'm kind of looking for, we're sitting on a hump out here. We're maybe about 300 yards offshore and the gar come up and they like, they actually like take breaths. I, I don't exactly know what, they have like an air sack or something they have to keep filled, uh, but they'll actually come up and hit the surface. And what I'm watching for and why I'm hoping it'll calm down a little bit more. In fact, it already seems like it's getting a little calmer out here is you can hear the gar hit the surface. You can, you can hear them when they come up and slap the surface. So um, I actually just saw one slap over here and then I saw another one slap out over here. So what we're going to be doing today, well, I'll show you my setup in a second, but I'm kind of hopefully going to be like kind of sight fishing for them. Um, this seems like it's a good area right here. I've already seen two hit the surface. Uh, yeah, we're on 14, a 14 foot hump. It's like 45 feet right out there. So I think they're going to be cruising these humps and uh, uh, coming up for air. Seems like they like sunny days too. So this is this is prime location, I'm thinking, especially since we've seen a couple hit the surface. So we're going to go ahead and pause right here. Let me show you guys my setup. Since those gar are coming up to the surface, what I do here, or what we're going to try to do anyway, is I have a bobber and then about maybe about three feet below it, I've just got a little octopus hook on um, a 30 pound mono leader. And the 30 pound leader is for the teeth of the gar to hopefully uh, combat the teeth. Cause that's gonna be like our main, main adversary today is the gar cutting the line. Uh, otherwise I'm only fishing with eight pound test line the rest of my rod and reel setup. But I have the 30 pound mono. I also actually have 50 pound mono. If we find that they're able to cut through this, I'm gonna try the 50 pound mono instead. Let me show you guys the bait that we're using here. Here we go. I have fresh dead herring. The gars seem to love that this spring. So I thought, well, if that's what they like eating, we'll just give it to them again. 
there are a lot of different baits it seems like people like using for gar i had somebody tell me they only use live bait uh, i actually did hook into a gar one of my first trips ever out here in south carolina i was using a baby bluegill a live baby bluegill and i actually did hook into a gar uh using a live baby bluegill but i've had the most success with cut bait so i'm just gonna just kind of stick with that for today what i have there is just a little bit of herring the head of a herring through the circle hook three feet below the surface i'm gonna only use like i said one rod for now since we are fighting the breeze this morning so we'll just kind of drift start out deeper drift in shallow with the bobber and basically just kind of wait for a gar to cruise by and smell it and uh hopefully we'll get some bobber down action and hope that that 30 pound mono is is the ticket does a good enough job i should say here we go anchors away well bobber away i guess all right and now we just watch our bobber Kind of classic old school fishing. Always bring boat snacks just in case the fishing is a little slow. You know things are getting serious when the Red Bull comes out. That's always good. All right guys, well, we are now at lunchtime. I actually haven't had a single bite. I've actually switched over to my heavier rod and reel setup. I don't know why I didn't do this at first. This one's got 14 pound test line on it. Uh, probably would have been the smarter choice to start the day off with. Doesn't really matter. We haven't gotten any bites yet. Uh, and I really haven't even seen anything hit the surface. It did get a little bit cooler last night. So I'm wondering if that maybe has affected it. Of course, it's a little bit more difficult to like hear the splashes or anything because of the waves but it is calming down now um so hopefully i don't know hopefully our luck will turn this afternoon because so far we've been out here for about an hour and a half and uh nada okay so Barbara, our barber's going down barber's going down oh there it goes it's going it's going something's got it okay first bite of the day come on i'm gonna let him eat it finally finally water starting to heat up yeah, yeah, okay, start taking some line. That you can guys see. I don't know if you can really see that or not, but she's starting to take out some line there. Yeah, she's going. She's going. What I've what I've kind of learned is that uh, um, you want to let oh yeah, yeah, she's taking out line. What I learned from this from gar fishing this spring is that the gar some won't initially when they when they bite your bait, no won't always initially eat it they'll bite it and they'll have it in the beak and then they'll swim around with it. And what I'm waiting for is pauses like this. It's not taking out any line anymore. And that means they're stopping and they're actually like, they're chowing down on it. They're, they're, they're eating it, they're getting it down. And that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for that octopus hook to get down here, get out of the beak area and get down here into their, into their gullet. And now we just have to cross our fingers that the mono is do, gonna do its trick here, the 30 pound mono. Uh, that was a long pause. We're going to go ahead and go for this fish right here. We got him. At least for now. At least for now we got him. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, no. Did she get off? Or is she running towards me? No, no. She's running towards me. She's running towards me. We got it still. We got her. All right. This is just, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Come on. Come on. Got 14 pound test line, that 30 pound mono leader. Oh, come on. Oh, I see the bobber right there. Where is she? Oh, this looks like a nice sized one. Whoa. This looks like a nice sized one. Come on, baby. Where are you? Oh yeah, there she is, there she is. Yeah, that's not a bad fish at all. That's not bad at all. She ain't in until she's in though. Man, these are a good fight. These are real good. Oh yeah, look at that. All right. Come on. Grab by the tail. Yes. Yeah, okay. Come on. Come on. Yes. Look at that. All right. First bite. First fish. Oh yeah. Oh. Woohoo. 
awesome. All right, I'm gonna show you guys these teeth. Look at that. That's what I'm worried about right there. See that mono right down in there? Woo! Check out these teeth. Let's see if we can get her to crack a smile here. Just bear, oh, look at that. Look at the, oh, 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 almost went over the side. She was not happy with that. Holy cow, okay. Whew. Now she's got plenty of spunk in her. I wanna see if I can open these teeth up a little bit though. Oh, look at that, see, she got me right on the edge. Ooh, yeah, she stuck me good. Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna get her on a stringer first here. Oh my word, that is a nice looking fish though. That is good. Right there, that's a three plus foot fish all day. I've got a plan. I didn't really think about how I was gonna actually keep her to be honest with you guys because I mean it's a three foot you know three foot plus long fish geez, that's thrashing around with razor sharp teeth. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna reach into the mouth and get our hook back. I'm kidding we're not doing that. We're snapping the line right here. Oh, there we go. All right, get that, get this out of the way to start. All right, and next what we're gonna do is actually, since we're gonna be cooking it up today, we're gonna bleed her out. It's a little bit gruesome, but it's the best way to keep the meat good. Now we're gonna take our really flimsy uh, stringer here because I came really well prepared. And that's also another reason to start bleeding her out is then she'll die and then I don't have to worry about her jerking around on this thing and getting off. All right, just like that. Then we're gonna attach this to another point. We've got her attached at two different points below the mouth and as well as two different points on the boat. I have to do that because these, these, these uh, stringers are just garbage. Now, it's a little bit gruesome, but like, as you can see right now, she's she's bleeding out pretty good. But uh, that, again, that's just, that's to preserve the meat and uh, uh, get the blood out of the meat. So it's, it's, it's for, uh, it's for keeping the meat good. And it doubles in this instance for helping me keep this fish on this flimsy stringer. So nice guys. We got our first gar, first bite first fish that's awesome that's awesome we're one for one with that 30 pound mono leader so it's a good sign good sign so it's definitely a lot calmer as you guys can see out here now i'm hoping now i should be able to start hearing them hit the surface and seeing it as well problem is i actually just haven't like recently i haven't seen like anything hit the surface i'm kind of surprised actually i haven't like typically in this area there's a lot of action. I mean, they're down there, obviously. We caught one. Just not coming up and, and slapping the surface like I typically see them do. We'll just keep our eyes and ears open, I guess. Guys, I just saw a gar hit the surface by my bobber, probably about seven feet from the bobber. Oh yeah, they're, they're a bunch of, they're, they're hitting all over right over here. Come on. Oh yes, it went run right, right past, about 10 feet past my bobber. They're all in that area, come on. Now they're starting to hit the surface. Good grief. They're just all over right over here. They're just all right in this area. Is it one just jumped right here? Looked like he's heading towards my bobber. Is it right there? Right there. They're chasing something. I think there's, I mean, that, they're not coming up for air. Like they're, they're coming up and, and smacking the surface pretty good. There's like no way I should have, I should have gotten bit there. I mean, they're, they're probably like a dozen of them literally around it. We're going to put a fresh piece on here. All right, there we go. Fresh bit of herring head there. Let's see if they can resist that. I doubt it. They're just all up in this area, man. Got to be like some bait fish or something around here that they maybe that's what they're schooling up on. Heave ho! There we go. Oh, there goes a barber. Barber's down. Barber down. Barber down. Okay, gonna give her line. Yep, she's taking line. She's taking line. Starting to tighten up. Oh, she's not running. I don't see my bobber. I think she's just eating it right now. Let me stand up and see if I see a bobber anywhere. She must just be sitting there like munching on it. Unless I'm missing my bobber, but it's a big old orange bobber. 
Man, they're just, okay, yeah, there's a the line tightening. We're gonna go ahead and go for it. Got her, at least for now anyway. There we go, come on. Come on, baby. Woohoo! <laughs> we got it. We got her. We got her. Now, let's see if it, I mean, I was like, come on. I mean, there are literally just dozens of them out here jumping all around. I'm like, what in the world? How do I not have a bite? And all of a sudden that bobber just, boom. I mean, it just disappeared. I looked away for one second and I could just, I just barely saw it like going under the surface. Oh, look at that. Good run, she's heading out for deeper water. Oh no, here she goes, here she goes. I think this is a good one right here. <laughs> come on, come on. Come this way. Oh yeah. Man, what a bull. These things are just a just bulls. Just absolute bulls. There's the bobber. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good look at the size of that porker. That's bigger than the last one I got, 100%. 100%. Come here, baby. All right, there we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, oh, there's a piggy. There's a piggy, yeah. Got her, got her. Oh, it fell over. Ah. Oh yeah, come on, come on. Come about the belly. Yeah, oh, look at that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, come here. Come here. Oh man, right in the corner of the mouth. She just gobbled it up. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Yeah! Oh my heavens. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Whoa. Holy cow. Oh yes. Got her. Woo! Oh my word, look at that. Cut me. They're on or the 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 um the there's a plate here along the gills that just sliced me on that finger too. Good grief, these things are like pokey everywhere. But we got her. That's probably the biggest gar I've ever caught before right there. That is awesome. Oh yeah. She might thrash out of my hands, I don't know. But look at that. Holy cow. Good grief. Oh, oh yeah, she's gonna try to do something. She's not happy, look at that. Oh my word. <laughs> Woo! That. That's a piggy right there. That is an absolute piggy of a fish. We gotta, we gotta measure her up and see how big that fish is. I'll bet my, I'll bet that's, I don't, well, I have no idea. I don't know, let's, let's see here. Oh my word. Huh. Well, okay, I'll have to measure it later. Um, in fact, probably something will pop up on the screen like down here, uh, cause I don't have my measuring tape, which I don't know how I did that. So we will measure it against a rod here. Okay, so she goes all the way up to the second eye. The second eye on this fishing rod. Yeah, oh, whew. Okay. I got, I tell you what, if anything, if anything, it's a fun fight. They might not taste good today, I have no idea. We're definitely gonna give it a try. But if anything, grab yourself some heavy mono as a leader and you hook into anywhere, you know, between a three and a five foot fish. Uh, it's 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 a lot of fun. That, that was just a fun fight. Plus, they are pretty cool looking. That's for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's get her back in the water here. Guys, we are two for two with that 30 pound mono. That's just getting it done. It's just getting it done. That's awesome. Like, I, this is great. I mean, we haven't caught a lot of fish. We've been out here fishing for about three and a half hours and only caught two, but we're starting like right over here. I mean, I've seen just literally dozens of them hitting the surface right here. 
I want to see, maybe we can pull up one or two more. Like I said, typically they're, they're all spread out over this entire area, but right now they're just concentrated over this little 10 foot hump right here. And they're chasing something. I'm going to pay attention to the depth right there, right there, just jump. I'm going to pay attention to this depth finder here and see, like there, there must be some, there must be some bait fish or something around here that they're, they're chasing because they're not anywhere else. They are right here. Oh, there's one right here. If I had a spear, I could throw it at him. There's another one. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna throw the drone up. Let's throw the drone up. Let's see, let's see if we can see what's going on down here. Hold up, hold up. Oh, that always makes me nervous. All right, there we go. Fresh piece of herring. I like that head part because I like hooking it through the eyes. Just a good spot to hook it. Let's see if we can get another one here. They're just hanging out out here. Oh, there was a big one. A big one just jumped. Oh, look at that. Yeah, they're, they're chasing. They're chasing. We might have to get a piece of rope out because they're, they're straight chasing something. Holy cow, I have a rat's nest. What in the heavens? Okay, please nothing bite. What in the goodness gracious is this? Good grief. If we get bit now, we're in trouble. Trouble right here in River City. Look at this, look at, look at this. I don't need, like how? Who, what, when, why? Okay, okay, we might be getting it, hold up. What I don't understand is why is it wrapped around? <laughs> I'm in danger. Holy cow, I don't know how I got that out, but I did. I also don't know how I didn't get bit the whole time. Okay, I guess it's just my day today. Kinda, sorta. All right guys, this is what I've done. I've taken a little jig head with about six inches of rope. This is how I've seen it done in the movies anyway. Um, and then I had, oh, I have some stinky shrimp smell. I've always been told that basically they're kind of like catfish. They like smelly stuff. I'm hoping that pink shrimp smell and stuff combined with the yellow there. Yeah, give it like a nice orange, orangey look. And apparently they're attracted to the, uh, attracted to the look of it. And then hopefully they'll smell it and be like, oh, that looks yummy. So that is the hope. Oh, hold up. But I'm getting a bite on the, I thought I was getting a bite on the bobber. I think I got a nibble at the very least on the bobber. We'll keep an eye on that. Wait, my bobber's taking off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Give him line, give him line. Oh yeah, he's going, he's going with it. Okay, okay, before we throw this out, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with this. Is he still taking line? I don't see my bobber and the line has stopped. And it's picking back up again. Okay, here we go. The bobber came back up to the surface, but it was like it was like swimming around on the surface. So we're gonna we're gonna roll the dice here. Here we go. Tightening, tightening, tightening. Got him. Right now. Anyway. Yep, we got him. So far, <laughs> that could change at any moment. <laughs> Another one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes, come here. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, 
Come on, baby. Taking a run. There it is. Whoa, guys, we might have actually hooked this one. We might have actually just hooked, like straight hooked this in the in the beak. Oh yeah, yeah, it totally looks like, come on, come here. Oh, that hook is barely in there. It is, it is, it is barely in. Oh. Wow, I thought that was gonna do it. Oh my word, okay, come here. Come here. Feisty McGee. Yeah, look at that, yes, whoa, wow. Careful, good night of living. Woo, we did it. Nice, oh yeah. Check that out. Hook is right there in the mouth. Oh, in the mouth, good grief. Good grief, I tell you, they just, they'll sit there they're like so docile. And then all of a sudden they'll just be like, boom. Try to pop you right in the face. Look at that, that's another porker. Another porker. That is sweet. That is so cool, so cool. All right, let's get her off the hook. We actually might be able to save that hook. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the hook through, just like so, and then I'm gonna nip the line so we save the hook. Right there, if she'll let me. There we go, save the hook. Drop it thin, pull the line through. That is frayed all the way through, <laughs> but here you go. There you go, another three plus footer. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Just a, a, a pretty fish. Good fight, just awesome. Look at those teeth too. Ooh, hoo, hoo. No sir on those teeth. That is excellent. You know what, I think we'll let this one go too. We've already got one for eating. Look at that, yeah, she's got plenty of spunk. Plenty of spunk, nice. Oh man, that that 30 pound mono is the key. I'm convinced of it. The 30 pound mono is what you need. There are so many over here though. I so I want to try this really quickly before we call it a day. And get to eating. I think they're I think they're chasing bait fish or something down there. They're they're super active. I'm seeing them actually like come up and like smash the surface, and they're like actually like leaping out of the water. We're gonna try this rope trick here a little bit. See if we get anything. Never caught one like this. It'd be awesome if we could. That is an awkward cast. I'm not really sure, just like, you just kind of pull it through the water. No idea what I'm doing, but we're doing it. Two, one. I'm not gonna let it even sink that much. Right there, I mean, they're just all over. Right in here. Look at that right there. Just right there. Goodness gracious. Huh. I don't know. Maybe they're smelling the shrimp and they're like, what the heck is that? I don't know. Well, we gave it the old college try. If anybody has any tips or tricks out there for the old rope trick, I'd love to hear it. Didn't work for me today anyway. All right. Oh yeah, they're jumping, flippity flopping over here. One more fish, guys. One more fish, then we're gonna go try some fish here. See what gar tastes like. I'm just having fun catching them, man. Finally, you can, look at this. This is what I was hoping for. Water's like glass. You can see them hitting the surface. You can, lo it's easier to locate them that way instead of just like randomly floating around hoping that basically one just swims by your line. That's, that's how we caught the first one really this morning. Just really got lucky. But this, this is what I was hoping for. So, you know, the weatherman, I guess, was kind of right. Well done, old boy. Oh, got two heading in on the position. Down by the bobber. Come on. Oh, there goes the bobber. Oh, <laughs> the bobber's just taking off. Oh, there we go, there we go. Uh, nice, nice, open the bale up. Let's go. The bobber just totally looked like something out of Jaws when the barrels are going across the water. Just, just started screaming across. 
Nice. All right, there's a pause right there. Now she's taking off again. But uh, I guess, look at that. You see that? She's taking some line. Well, okay. Oh, now she's stopped. Okay, hold up, hold up. That's the pause I want right there, I'm thinking. Here we go. Uh, the, uh, a little more. There we go. We're going to try for it now. There we go. Got her. Got her for the moment. Oh, and she is way far out there. <laughs> yes. Nice. Nice. Another one. <laughs> this is fun, guys. Gar fishing. I mean, you're basically like sight fishing for them. And then you hook into, you know, this three foot plus fish. And you get a good fight out of it. I mean, just, this is a good time. This is just a good time. Oh, she's coming to the surface. What size we got here? Yeah, not a bad one, not a bad, oh, there she goes. There she goes, there she goes. Come back up, come back up. I ain't gonna hurt you. Actually, I'm probably gonna keep this one. I want another one to eat. I want a couple of them. Here we go. Yeah, look at that. One of the, a little bit smaller one of the day. But not a bad fish at all. Not a bad fish at all. Like, it's still like three plus feet long. I think I actually legit hooked this one again, too. Come here, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one's, this one's hooked. Barely. Ah! Ah, whoa! Come here. Hopefully this holds up, because... Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice. Nice, I actually hooked that one in the side of the mouth. Awesome. Woo! Check that out. Check that out right there. Look at that. Actually got the hook in the side of the mouth. That mouth's so tough that that hook was not coming out. Nice looking fish. You guys go. Hey, look at that. Another beautiful fish. Oh my word. That is cool. So, oh, whoa. Oh, you had something to say. There you go. So cool. Look at the armor on that fish. Like, look at those scales. That, that is pretty, pretty impressive. Guys, I told my little girl Arabella and my son Crockett that I'd bring a big toothy fish home for him. So if anything, if we don't like the one that we eat today, this guy could be good fertilizer for the garden. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep this one as well. Awesome, what a good catch. What a fun fight too. Good grief, guys, the gar are just, they're all over around me. They're just hitting the surface everywhere. We could probably stay out here and catch like another dozen gar, but it's already like five o'clock and I'm hungry and I am excited to see if we can make this gar taste good. We've got our two on the stringer. Let's go ahead and get on back. And I guess first we gotta clean them, which looks like a pretty hefty task in and of itself. So let's get started on that, get some supper. All right, guys, I have brought with me this board that we're gonna hopefully have help us use clean this fish, as well as like some big heavy duty wire cutters. I've been told I need those. So let's see, let's grab. Oh, she got a couple of nice ones. Look at that, they're both a good fish. You know, let's use, let's clean the bigger one. Let's clean the bigger one. Good looking fish. Awesome. What we're gonna try to be doing is we're gonna make a cut from gill to gill and then all the way down the back. That is the hope. I've been told this is like armor. So we just need to get a start. There we go. Okay, we got a start. There we go. Now we take our wire cutters, basically, is what they are. Oh, yeah. This is good so far. Good first clip. This is definitely not your typical fish cleaning process. I've never done something quite like this before, that's for sure. And there, all right, we've made the cross cut. Now we gotta go down the back, inch by inch. Huh? Get away from me, horsefly. Gosh, I have just had the horseflies bugging me. Get, get, just land on this. You can have as much of this as you want. Jeez. I wonder if my knife, my knife sharp enough. Look at that. My knife's not even sharp enough to get through that armored plate. And my knife is sharp. 
guarantee it. Let's try this guy. It's more like a butcher knife. I don't know if that's gonna... That's not even really doing much. No, good grief. Okay. We'll just go with this a little bit at a time here. Okay, I think that is gonna about do it right back to the tail. There. Oh. Phew. Was the line very straight? Well, you know what? Actually, Dad Gummit, that's not too bad at all. I'm I'll live with that. I'll live with that all day long, twice on Sundays. All right. Now that being done. I'm gonna open this up, and the meat is right against the skin. I'm gonna try to cut the meat away. Yeah, 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 all right, all right, all right, I got this, we got this. We can do it. <laughs> there you go. Oh man, this is gonna be like a big old strap. I mean, it helps so much to have a really, really sharp knife. And this sucker is sharp, so we're gonna just take our time. Go nice and easy, but you guys can kind of see, look at that, see how it's starting to like peel away. Cool beads, look at that, we've like exposed a whole side. All right, I think we're about done here, look at that. You know, one of my first thoughts is this is a lot of work. It looks like though, there's a lot of meat. That's so good. We'll find out, but look at that. Look at that like laid out like that. That is crazy. All right, now, You've got the spine right there. We're just gonna cut all the way down the spine once again. Very helpful to have a very sharp knife. Until you go down and I can feel the ribs. Feeling rib. There we go. And then you just kinda, like any other fish, just follow, I just about cut myself. Just follow that rib line the rib cage, I should say, all the way down and extract a healthy portion of meat. I have to say, it seems like there's a lot of meat on this guy. Goodness. Is that it? Just like that? Hold up. Good grief. That, that's quite a bit of meat, to be honest with you. It's a lot of work, though. Holy cow. All right. That's <laughs> not my best work, but it's the first time I've done this. Here, Let's get this <laughs> cleaned off here. All right, wow. I mean, that, that meat's like 16 inches long. I've left a little bit on the bone there, as you can see, but dang, I mean, that's a lot of meat. If, if we can make this taste good um, with a few more, a few, like some more proper tools to clean it with than what I have, I mean, you get a lot of meat off a of gar. I'm gonna stack the freezer. I'll be honest with you guys. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do some work because that definitely, that definitely does not look appetizing. Well, we'll see what happens. Whew. All right, guys, we have our cooking setup, including a little portable cooker. I'll have links to all this in the description below if you guys want any of this, including high adventure merch like this foxy little octopus necklace right here. High adventure hats, t-shirts, trying to expand the merchandise side of things. So, if you guys want anything, description below. Go get yourself hooked up. If you don't want anything, that's, you know, then don't go to the description below. All right, that's lit. We're gonna take a little canola oil to start off. Drop a little bit in here. Just like that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cook our fish down in just some salt and pepper, getting them ready for making our fish patties. Now I have like, this is Himalayan pink rock salt and organic black pepper. I like grinding my salt and pepper when I can, just a little fresher, plus I like like the bigger chunks. Basically I just feel fancier when I'm grinding salt and pepper. Mm mm mm. Oh, doesn't that just wet your appetite right there? Okay, here we go. Yeah, ooh. A little hot, a little hot. And a little bit more. Mm-mm, good. Go ahead and apply 
our pepper first, liberally. Next, our salt, liberally. I don't know, guys. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. All right, guys. It's pretty much cooked. What we're gonna do, take it out. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna drop it in our little tin here. I mean, it doesn't smell terrible. It doesn't smell appetizing either, so I don't know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this fish up. Or try to. Jeez. This is not a flaky fish. <laughs> this is so rubbery. But like, it's cooked. I swear to you, it's cooked. Now, I do know typically when you're making fish cakes, you want to bake the fish before you break it down like this. And maybe that's part of the problem while it's rubbery. I think it's this is just the consistency of this fish. I don't think it has anything to do with that for the fact that like we cooked it in oil instead of baking it personally. Um, I just think this is, this is how this fish is. Okay, we have mashed up our gar about as good as we can. Seriously, you could put this fish, probably should put this fish through a meat grinder. That is ridiculous. Oh man. Okay, next we're gonna take an egg. Oh. Crack one egg in here. Next, we'll take some lemon juice. Fresh lemon. Actually, we're gonna get rid of the seeds here. Don't want a seed in my patty. There we go. Now we're gonna squeeze fresh lemon juice in there. Now we're gonna take Old Bay seasoning. Apply. Ooh, ah, oh. The lemon juice is hitting the cuts on my fingers from the gar's teeth. Mamacita. Oh, that stings. That's not fun. That's not fun. Anyway, back to Old Bay. Throwing the Old Bay in there. Ooh. And then also some breadcrumbs. Now, I got garlic and herb breadcrumbs instead of just original just because I thought, well, that might be kind of fun. I don't know. I'm going to throw a good healthy amount in there just like that. Now we're gonna mix all this together so we can make our patty or patties. This looks like it'll come out to at least a couple patties here. All right, and we also have, I actually almost forgot about this, some fresh green onions. I don't wanna go ahead and chop up in there. I kinda eyeball a lot of this stuff. Like I know what needs to go in. I'll get like the, like this recipe is for like I don't know, like 12 or 14 fish patties, but obviously I'm not making that much. So I pare it down and then uh, kind of go from there. All right, let's see if we can make patties out of this here. A gar patty, there you go. Just like that. Look, a gar patty, booyah. We're making patties, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now this, like looking at it, does not look half bad. You know, now that we're in the stage where like the old bay, the lemon, the uh, fresh green onion is in it. Like this is starting to look not too shabby now. <laughs> like rolling a snowball. <laughs> Something like that. All right, there you go. Check it out. Three gar patties. I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. Let's go ahead and get them cooked up here. Let me show you how we're gonna do that. I am having trouble with matches today. Holy McMother Nuggets. There we go. Get our stove kicked back on. Now for this portion, we have an actual skillet that we're gonna put on there. Gonna go ahead and drop, we'll go ahead and drop a little canola oil in there. All right guys, here we go. Oil's heated up. Let's drop that right in there. Just like that. Well, got two patties cooking. Let's see what happens here. Right, let's go ahead and see. Maybe I should have just done one patty at a time. Just the flipping process. Could prove to be tricky. Oh, no, okay. Got it. Oh, okay. Cooking definitely. Maybe a little long on that side. All right. Well, I'm not going to lie. That doesn't look terrible. Guys, I think that's done. I'm going to turn this off. 
Look at the other side. Oh yeah. So look at that side right there. Check that out. Nice. Ooh. We had the pan under that. Nice uh, golden on that side. Dark golden on that side. <laughs> Maybe the same thing with this one hopefully here. Oh yeah. Looks good. There you go. We have fresh gar patties. Moment of truth right here. Let's do this. You know what we're going to do? We're going to take a little extra fresh lemon juice. A little bit over each patty. There we go. Make it rain. I'm not going to lie. From what it was in the, uh, like, cooking the fish originally to this now. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can hold one up. It, it is a marked, marked difference. I feel like if gar is going to taste good, this, this is how it's going to taste good. All right. Say a quick prayer. Thank the Lord for our day. And tuck in. Mm. All right. Here we go. First time ever catching and cooking gar on my channel. Fresh gar patties. Here we go. Here we go. Guys, that's good. This sh this shouldn't taste good. Why does this taste good? Guys, that's delicious. That's delicious. I I I'd eat I eat five or six of those right there. Holy cow! I kid you not. May I mean anything in Old Bay seasoning, in my opinion, is good. But the green onion. A little bit of lemon on the top, that little fresh lemon. I can't believe this. I can't believe that this is good. I expected it to be a lot chewier, but I think the second cooking has really just, I mean, made the meat. It's made the meat. I spent probably like six, seven minutes just trying to mince that gar up. I think having the garlic and herb breadcrumbs was fantastic instead of just doing regular bread comes but i'm so glad i kept another gar now i am going to take that thing home and make fresh gar patties my mind's blown right now a little bit i'm i'm shocked i thought i would bite into this and i don't know it just, the, the fish just does not look appetizing you guys saw the meat the meat of the gar does not look appetizing at all in my opinion this is nuts I, 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 I kid you not, this is not, I'm not putting on, I'm not pretending because we've gone through all this work, like, I honestly thought this was not going to taste good at all. This is delicious. This is delicious. You know what we have here? When I do a gar cook-off against my bro, this is going to win. This is going to win right here. This is money in the bank. Oh. I don't know about eating gar the other way, like how we had cooked it up at the first part. That was super sketchy, but this, this is, if you're going to eat gar, this has to be the way right here, I, I, in my opinion. Now, I haven't had it any other way, but, I mean, most people don't like to eat them, and, and that in the pan, the way we first cooked it, didn't, uh, yeah, that looked like, it felt like a rubbery octopus, is what it felt like. I, I don't think fish... It's supposed to have the consistency of octopus. But this, this is good. Wow. Wow. Holy cow. That's so good. Get out of here. Wow. Mm. Look at that. Just absolutely cooked to perfection. I'm, I'm, I'm geeking out. I'm geeking out. Seriously, go give gar patties a try. Catch gar. They're super easy to catch. And the cool thing about it is, not a lot of people target them. So, I mean, there are just tons of gar all over in this one lake. So, I mean, you could go out with relative ease and be cooking up delicious gar patties. Now, the one thing I will say is that it is quite a bit of work. You've got to hack through the armor of the gar in order just to get to the meat, then shave it all out, and then cook it once, then cook it twice. It's a lot of work. 
but you guys saw how much meat came off of that one gar and i mean you're getting three foot five foot fish i mean one gar will probably make a dozen patties and if you fillet it a little better than what i did you could probably get more than that so there's tons of meat to be had off of just one gar and that wasn't even a very big one thank you guys for hanging out with me today we finally did a gar catch and cook check it off the list massive massive success in my opinion hope you guys enjoyed the video and the recipe and as always i will see you in the next one